what we're going to do is a little series of videos. Um, I got bought a little Stuart S50 by my dad a couple of years ago now for my birthday. Um, never actually got around to looking at it, you know, let alone starting it. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a series of videos um, just showing the build of a Stuart S50 little mill engine. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, I know Tubal Kane did a series in the Model Engineers Workshop magazine, which you can get the, the downloads off the website, uh, the actual building of it. We're going to do something similar, uh, take a bit of advice. I know the design changed slightly over the years, so some of the dimensions, etc., will be different. We'll, we'll come across those as we do it. Uh, we're going to take the kit, I say, from its unmachined castings, machine up each part, some of the pitfalls, some of the usual pitfalls people come across and hopefully some ways of getting around them um, this will be a build it's not going to be like every day so doing something it's a kit where I'm going to do it sort of when I get an hour here and there uh, and you'll probably find some of the filming's done in the, the original workshop um, set in my garage it, uh, it's uh, where I first started many many years ago with a, an 8 foot by 6 foot workshop believe it or not and uh, I think I said, you know, it's in there, it had a, a little mill, an ML7 um, drill, bench grinder, vice, uh, all in the, you know, you used to squeeze in through the door and there was a little space in the middle. But it was brilliant because you could just turn around and every machine was sort of, was there, we were working in, but we weren't much room to, to make things on a bench. So before we get started on the machining this and finishing it we're just gonna give it a quick filing uh, take off any rough bits on the castings any of the flashing marks just give them a, a, a file um, and, and a bit of a emery cloth if needed and then uh, you know we'll, we'll mark it all out and what we'll do as we do each sort of bit of the the machining process each part of the of the steam engine and uh, we'll do a bit of research on it and try and see any tips on you know the best way of doing it and also I'll try and link in if I find any any helpful bits I'll try and link them in in the description um, any questions please ask and also if you've got any tips as well if you built one of these um, just comment below give us any tips uh, I'll try and help other people out so we don't fall into any any big traps or anything we'll get going now and just show you the, the, the first video and uh, we'll see you at the end so the first thing we did just took a file, uh, run round, just took a lot of the flashing off on the inside of the spokes. We just run round with a round edge file, just took all the little flashing marks off. Trust me, do these now because when you come to paint, they'll stand out like a sore thumb. So it's a quick case of cleaning them up. As you can see there, the uh, filed spokes in the foreground and the unfiled one in the background with all the flashing marks. It's simple, just remove them with the file. The same on the main casting, your flashing marks also were the inlet and outlays for the, the cast iron into the mould, just took those down, again went round just cleaned up any little marks, you can see that we had a bad one on there, just a bit of stuff stuck on it, just cleaned it all up um, and then I can ready for a paint really. <coughs> I'll just show you that in a second, what we tend to do, we, we tend to give it a coat of paint at this stage, just a primer coat, anything like that. Um, the reason being is, one, if you work so it's a bit damp, stop the parts rusting, because cast iron does rust fast, but also it stops any oil getting impregnated from your hands, um, it soon gets into the pores, and then when you try and paint this later, your paint will come off because it won't stick to the oil. Um, so the other thing that we did as well, I put some engineer's blue on the bottom, and what we're going to do, we're just going to take it so you just want a, a flat finish basically. So basically surface plate, a bit of wet and dry on. And I said we use some engineer's blue you can get from anywhere like RDG, anywhere like that. And all you're looking for is, is mainly a flat surface, so you just place it on, get a few rubs. As you can see, it's took off most of the blue, just got a little bit here, a little bit there. Mainly what you're looking for is just high on majority of the points which we've nearly got. You don't need to take a lot off. 
just the firm pressure. So yeah, just one or two load, that's fine I think, because when we're clamping down for the machining, you know, you've got your main, main points there. Also, yeah, we've got an even sort of spread of the load. I made it still look a bit more just to, to get it look a bit flatter. But again, so it doesn't need a lot. That's perfect, like just a couple of little bits there, which the more of the sort of in the grain of the, the casting, the majority of it is, is now flat. So that'll be perfect. So when we start machining, it'll just sit then, it won't rock, it'll just sit solid when we clamp it down. So I'll show you a bit of painting, uh, quite simple. Um, basically, what <coughs> I've used in the past is this stuff from Rustin's. It's actually a water base, it's something for cleaning your brushes out. Uh, I have used it quite a bit on cast iron, works a treat. But even use it on aluminium, it doesn't say for aluminium. Uh, but I tried it on an experiment and then painted over it with some paint. Left it a, a month or so, I went back and it was rock solid, it didn't flake off or anything. I've not tried it outside yet on the aluminium, uh, but just for like anything you're painting, you paint it on a machine that's keeping it inside, it, it does work actually, even though it doesn't say that. So if it goes wrong, don't blame me. So I'll just set up the painting bit now and show you that. So like I say, <coughs> just an even coat, nothing spectacular at the moment. It's mainly just to, I say, stop it absorbing the oil. The other good thing about doing it with some primer also is when you're marking out, because you can actually scribe the paint, which we'll show you later on when we get around to machining it. As I said on the intro, we're here in my original workshop. Um, this is actually the extension. My original workshop was, uh, believe it or not, eight foot by six foot. And we had uh, a foot in there, a drill press, vice bench grinder, small milling machine. Um, yeah, we used to squeeze in through the door and uh, used to have some fun in, in that. This is like an ex, it's now a galley. It's just basically just gone eight, eight by six. It's now about like 16 by 6 so we just sort of double the length broken through into what was at the store bit if you will in the in the garage there was a bit more sort of a years of collection of machinery in this one um, so when I'm doing anything like this I said just uh, as we said we'll just be doing it when we get the odd hour here and there nothing spectacular just taking time it's just when I can fit it in just a bit of a hobby this um, like I said, it got, got bought from me a few years ago. My dad got it me for a birthday present, a kit. Um, so, well, let's get around to having a go with it. So, that's what we'll be doing. So, I'll carry on painting this. Um, all we did before, I'm just got some acid tone and cloth, cleaned it all down, make sure no parts on, uh, no greasy bits on anyway, to make sure the paint will stick. So, I'll finish painting this off. I said it's a quick coat. Um, and we'll show you the other parts when they're done. Now you haven't painted up. I said I've not gone crazy like on the outside of the flywheel. We're just going to be machined, not on that daft. Mainly this is just to keep the oil from going into the metal. So when you do paint them properly later when it's all finished, uh, your paint will stick. Uh, but like I said, it will help uh, when marking out. Uh, so we've got the engineer's blue, but we can also just scrape into the paint and you'll see that works quite effective. Uh, just so. so yeah, um, so we'll let them dry and then we'll move on to the next stage. Just have to quickly show you this. This is the aluminium I was telling you about that we uh, painted with, with this water base, red oxide, uh, and then basically just give it a quick coat over uh, with some, I think it was a, an acrylic um, paint for like a, uh, like a front door or something like that, like a house, normal uh, paint, satin finish. Um, at first, when we first did it, we were, you can see just underneath there, we were scraping it off. A couple of days later, it wasn't really sticking that well. Um, but I've just left it tired enough um, for about a month. This was this had been done a few months ago, but I've left it for about a month. And then, as you can see, I've been attacking it with screwdrivers and, and all sorts. You, know, you can, it is quite, you can get through it, but you've got to really give it something. If you just give it like a normal knock, bang, it is quite resilient. 
So it's um, it's pretty good stuff for you know. Unless it's not designed for aluminium, but yeah, it's done only on normal stuff like cast iron, anything like that, which is designed for railings and radiators. It is absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, but as a core for aluminium, if it's if it's not going outside and not getting much hammer, um, then as a primer, yeah, use it as long as you can leave it a month or so before you you, you give it a knock or anything. Because before it was just scraping off that easy. So yeah, um, like I said, I'm not recommending it. As in, if it goes wrong, it's your own fault for using it. But I've used it successfully, and I say as a as a back, as a sort of primer for aluminium, yeah, it works. But for all this type of work, you know, the cast iron, it's absolutely brilliant stuff. So I just thought I'd show you that while these these are drying. Well, there you go. Um, just a, the first intro video, first video of the each step of building the S50. Hopefully, we'll get them all filmed. Uh, show you each step and through to a finished engine. Um, like I say. We'll see how it goes. Won't be a bill we're doing every day, but we'll we'll do it as we squeeze you know squeeze it in an hour here and there. So yeah, so if you've got any questions or anything, you know, please like and subscribe to the channel. Put any questions and comments in the bottom. Any advice, much great help. I've not built an S50 before, uh, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I know they are a nice little beginner's kit, if you will. So that's what I, say. I just wanted something I could just do a bit of leisure, just basically shut off project, and and so it goes from there. So you know, until next time, YouTubers. Thanks for watching and it'll be right.